Good evening. I'd like to welcome each of you back here at the Hickory Knoll Church of Christ for our evening service. If you would, turn your Bibles with me to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24. For those of you that were here this morning, you will recall, hopefully anyway, that we had talked about some things having to do with the return of Christ. And we particularly had in mind the release of the new Nicolas Cage movie, Left Behind. And, and we're looking Looking at, I've been looking at several scriptures today that that teach us about the return of Christ, and and one of the most troubling things about the left about the rapture left behind left behind doctrine or teaching is the idea that and several of you we were talking after uh, service, and and I know that one of one of the folks that were here this morning was was telling me that uh, he had talked to his his friends, a couple of guys in his neighborhood. And that's one of the things that uh, they really do believe that when Jesus comes back, that some will be left behind and will have another opportunity to live and to turn their life over to God. And, and that was something, that's in my opinion one of the biggest uh, things that we need to consider uh, in regards to these items. But you have a note sheet this evening and this is on the back of the page, back of the second page on the bottom. You see the source where this has been adapted from. I, I thought we could utilize this as a guide for our discussion tonight and basically these are some follow up verses from the this morning, we spent most of our time this morning in First Thessalonians four, and then also looking at some of the big ideas uh, out of the Book of Revelation, uh, including uh, what the Bible says at the very end. As Christians, we are to look forward to and anticipate and desire for the return of Christ to happen as soon as possible. You'll notice this is called When Christ Returns, a Bible-marking topic. And so I don't know if you're the kind that likes to write in your Bible or highlight your electronic Bible, but if that is the case, uh, you can utilize this as a guide uh, to do so, and, and, and that, I think, can be very helpful to you. But what we'll do is we'll use this note sheet as a guide for this evening for us to have all the Bible references handy and then we'll have a few blanks just to make sure you're paying attention uh, along the way. But in Matthew chapter 24, beginning in verse number 1, Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another. That shall not be thrown down. Jesus is teaching his disciples that the temple was going to be destroyed. And so because and since that this temple was their place of worship, the disciples were curious. And so they had questions and they wanted to, to get more information. And, and you notice in verse number 3 that they ask two specific questions. When will these things be? That's question number one. And the second question, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Now, if, as we look at these uh, two questions, in verses 4 through 35, Jesus is answering the first question about these things, uh, as is mentioned in verse number 3 and also in verses 33 through 34. These things having to do with the destruction of the temple. And then in verses 36 through 44... Jesus then answers his the second question having to do with the his return and particularly if you look in verse number 37 you see this uh, the idea of the coming of the son of man also verse number 39 as far as the coming of the son of man and then verse 44 therefore you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour when you do not 
expect Him. And so verses 36 through 44 answering the second question having to do with the return of Christ and this answering the second question that the disciples had asked in verse number 3. But it's kind of interesting. I have a New King James Bible and, and you have to remember that the subheadings are not inspired. These things are, are added. And in my New King James Bible, I have the second coming uh, described at beginning at verse number 27. And that is kind of interesting, though, that Jesus does not address the second question that was being asked until verse number 36. But if you would, take a look at verse 40 and 41. As these are often utilized, these two verses, by those who believe this idea of the rapture or the idea of being left behind. Jesus says, Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and the other left. And so as we take a closer look at this word taken, it literally means received. In fact, this is the same word, same exact word in the original language that Jesus had utilized over in John chapter 14, verse number 3, in which he says, If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. The word left literally means sent away. And so notice the text doesn't include the word behind. So it wouldn't make any sense and to say, and the other was sent away behind. At the return of Christ, some will be received and then others will be sent away. Let's go back, if you will, if you don't mind, over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. That's where we spent most of our time this morning. And as we mentioned this morning, that Paul was, was writing and was addressing the concern, and that was the, the concern of, well, what about our loved ones who had been faithful Christians that have already, dece- have already been deceased, have already passed uh, away? And so Paul is addressing uh, these items, and we mentioned this morning that that some who believe in this idea of left behind claim that Jesus will secretly snatch the faithful out away from the wicked. But as we mentioned this morning, notice in the context that there's going to be a shout. There's going to be the voice of the archangel. There is going to be the trumpet of God. In fact, we had mentioned this morning that the second coming of Christ is going to be the, one of the noisiest events that has ever happened in our lifetime. Much noisier than when Junior Gallette sacked the quarterback today in the end zone for that safety. But go now, if you will, to John chapter 6, the Gospel of John. In John chapter 6, verse number 40, Jesus says, And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believe in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. And so if you're making notes in your Bible or a note sheet here, we, we would emphasize the part, the part of this that this is pertaining to the righteous. That those who believe and those who are going to have everlasting life, the righteous are going to be raised on that day when Jesus comes again. But also notice the chapter before in John chapter 5, Verses 28 through and 29. Jesus says, Do not marvel at this, 
For the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. And so what we see here is this emphasis on those who have done good and those who have done evil. But notice that the good and evil are included in one resurrection. It's the same resurrection, the same event, both good and those who are evil, both the faithful and the unfaithful. Moving along to Matthew chapter 13, as we're trying to, to, to notice what Scripture says about the second coming of Christ. In Matthew chapter 13, Jesus is given a parable and he says, The kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast in the sea and gathered of some of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore. And they sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but threw the bad away. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come forth, separate the wicked from among the just, and cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. This is quite frankly is the exact opposite of what many who believe in the left behind idea. This is the exact opposite. Basically, as you see in verse number 50, these folks, the wicked, are not going to be left behind, but they are going to be cast away uh, into the furnace of fire. As we're going now to Second Thessalonians chapter 1. We learn some more things pertaining to the, the second coming of Christ. In 2 Thessalonians verse, chapter number 1, beginning in verse number 6, Scripture says, Since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you, and to give you who are troubled rest with us, when the Lord Jesus is revealed, that's one of those three words we had mentioned earlier as far as the, the coming or the appearing or the revelation or, or the re being revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on those who do not know God. And on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. And from the glory of his power. And when he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints. And to be admired among all those who believe. Because our testimony among you was believed. And so notice the point of emphasis, of course, for those the fire taking vengeance on those who do not obey God, those who are not His faithful. And according to this text, all will be affected by the second coming of Christ. A few more verses, and uh, thank you for your patience as we're tracing our way through these passages of Scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15. Let's pick up in verse number 20. Paul says, But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order. Christ the first fruits, afterward those who are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, 
when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death, for he has put all of these under his feet. But when he says all things are put under him, it is evident that he who put all things under him is expected. Now, when all things are made subject to him, then the Son himself will also be subject to him who put all things under him, that God may be all in all. In this passage, the Bible, Paul is teaching about the resurrection of the dead. And he's also talking about then comes the end as far as when the Lord is going to deliver the kingdom to God the Father. But notice as we're looking at these items, when Christ returns, the end comes. And so it's not that Christ, Christ will not come to begin his reign, but when he comes, it's coming to end it. Christ is reigning now over his kingdom, the kingdom being the church. Go now with me, if you will, to Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. The reason why we're looking at, and this is called a topical study, the reason why is when we're looking at a particular teaching or a particular doctrine, we want to notice as much as we can about what Scripture says about that topic. We know that God's inspired, God's Word, the Bible, is inspired. And so that nothing in one book is going to contradict something in another book. So we look to see whatever, all what is said pertaining to a particular topic and then try to, to make some sense and make some conclusions of it. But notice in Hebrews chapter 9, beginning in verse number 24, the inspired writer says, For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Not that he should offer himself often, as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with the blood of another. He then would have to suffer down since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time, apart from sin, for salvation. When Jesus comes again this second time, it is going to be for judgment. And that's what this passage is all about. It is pointed for men to die once, but after this... The judgment. Jesus is coming back and will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. And then finally, at least for this evening, turn, if you will, to Second Peter chapter three. Second Peter chapter three, we get a picture of Christ's return. Notice in ver- beginning in verse number ten. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things... 
Be diligent to be found by him in peace, without spots, and blameless. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which those who are untaught and unstable twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the Scriptures. You therefore, beloved, since you know these things beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. But grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. We get this big picture of Christ's return in this passage. And in verse number 11, there's an awesome question. What manner of persons ought we to be in holy conduct and godliness? In verse number 12, we learn about the coming of the day of God. And we also learn in this passage from verse 10, when Christ returns, the earth will be burned up. That's why no one's going to be left behind, because when Jesus comes back as a thief in the night, the earth, as we know it, is going to melt, and the elements will completely be dissolved. Now, as we try to draw a conclusion, there's a final paragraph here at the very end. From these passages, we learn that no one knows when the Lord will return, so we must be ready. We sang earlier, Jesus may come in the morning. Jesus may come at noon. Jesus may come in the evening. So keep your heart in tune. And so when Jesus comes again, even though we don't know when it's going to be, it's going to be as a thief in the night, everyone who has ever lived will be judged at the second coming. Christ will receive his own up in the clouds, and the wicked will be sent to everlasting punishment. And the earth and all that it is in it will be burned up. It will be dissolved. It will be destroyed. The second coming of Christ is something as Christians we look forward to. We anticipate. But what we have to understand is that when Jesus comes again, and this is the big idea of, of all and both lessons this morning, when Jesus comes again... That is when judgment is going to occur. There's no second chances. There's, there's not a, a, another opportunity. But when Jesus comes again as a thief in the night, he's going to receive those who have been faithful into heaven. And those who have rejected him, those who are unfaithful, are going to be cast away. They're going to be sent into everlasting punishment. And as Christians, as we've emphasized all day today, we are excited. We anticipate the return of Christ. Because the type of them or the, the, the type of person we ought to be, and that's who we are, as folks who are living in holiness, conducting ourselves, growing in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Are you ready for when Jesus comes back again? It's going to be a great day. It's going to be an awesome day. We don't know when that day is going to be. But we can make sure that every single one of us will be ready to spend eternity with our Savior, Jesus Christ, in heaven forever. This evening we have this song of encouragement. And if you desire to become a Christian tonight, you certainly are invited to do so. By believing in Jesus, repenting of your sins, 
confessing your faith and being baptized into Christ. Or if you need to come back to the Lord and to turn away from sin and to start living for Christ again, then you can certainly do that this evening and be restored. If we can help you in any way tonight, will you come forward right now while together we stand and sing?